Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at a new model that Stability AI has released in the past day or so. And this is a model they're calling Stable Vicuna. Uh, and they're claiming that this is the world's first open source RL, HF, LLM chatbot. Sounds like a lot of pre-qualifiers in there. So they've released a blog post, and it basically is just talking about how this is a Vicuna model just the original Vacuna model, but then fine-tuned on a number of different data sets. So they've basically taken a Llama model and they've trained it up. If we look down here at the data sets, we can see that they've trained it up on the Open Assistant Conversations, on the GPT for all prompts generation, and on the Alpaca data set. I presume this is the clean one, perhaps not. So a lot of these are still distilled data sets, meaning that it's taken from GPT-3 or ChatGPT, and we can't use them for commercial use. The data sets themselves, there's definitely an argument around whether people can use them or not. But certainly the model itself is uh, non-commercial. This is using the original Llama weights from Meta, and they, for whatever reason, still haven't allowed people to use this model commercially. So my guess is that as... Uh, stable AI and others are also training up Llama models. This is like a soft run for seeing what it's going to be like to train, once they've got their own Llama model, something that could be released for commercial use. So it, it's interesting that the data sets they've gone for, they haven't put in like the Dolly 2 data set. And there are a number of other you know, data sets that they've decided not to go for that say the Koala model had, which were, were quite interesting data sets as well. The other thing is that they've gone for three main data sets for the RLHF. And one of them comes from Open Assistant. One of them is from Anthropic. And one of them is the Stanford Human Preferences. And these data sets are publicly available. If we come and have a look, we can see here that this is the Anthropic data set. And we can see that there's, there's strings where it's got a human and it's got the answer and it has two lots of them, and then people choose which one was the better one. Anyway, if we have a look at the results in here, we can see that they've basically benchmarked their model against a number of the other models like this over the past uh, month or so. So we've got things like GPT for all, Koala, we've got Vicuna, you know, 1.1, we've got the Alpaca model in there as well. And we can see for most things, this model does seem to do very well. We can see on certain stats like the truthful Q&A, it perhaps is not as good as Alpaca and not as good as the Vicuna 1.1 or even the, the Koala model in there. But on, on the whole, it seems to do pretty good. So let's jump in and look at the collab. I've set up this collab. You will need an A100 to be able to run it. Unfortunately, it, this is a big model. It's 13 bit, even in even loading it in eight bit, you'll still need a pretty decent GPU to be able to do this. Because it's a Llama model, we can just bring in the Llama tokenizer and the Llama for causal language modeling. Lucky for us, this hugging face user, the bloke has already converted the weights over. So they're all there. We can just bring them in uh, and use them straight away. And then once you bring it in, you basically just set up a pipeline for doing text generation. I'm going to set the max length in here to 512, but you could certainly extend that. I'm going to set temperature to 0 0.7. And then just going to set up a few uh, little things to clean up the prompts as we go through. So one of the important things with all these models is that you must prompt it in the way that it expects to prompt. So I saw some people pointing out that some of the other models don't do as well, and they certainly don't do as well when you don't prompt them in the right way. In this way, you basically have to have it hashtag, 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 space, human, colon, then whatever you want to put in there, and then a new line, hashtag, 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 assistant. If you don't put this in, you will find that it will work some of the times, but it won't work all of the time. And you'll definitely get you know, some really weird outputs at times, and sometimes even no output at times as well. So with any of these models, you want to go and check what is the format of the prompt that's going on in there. I, so if we ask it, the standard question that we've been asking all these, what is the difference between llamas, alpacas, and vicunas? 
I we can see that okay, it, it's getting a response back, probably on par with what Vukuna was delivering before. I it, I think for this one, it's it, it's a good response. It's not necessarily outstandingly better than the other ones. I would say that there quite a few of them are getting good responses for uh, this kind of prompt already. If we look at write the write a short note to Sam Altman giving reasons to open source GPT four. Here we've got a a nice sort of email slash note going through the various reasons that it, it, it comes up with. I don't think this is going to influence Sam Altman or OpenAI anytime soon to actually open source this, but it it does show us that okay that this can write it an email. One of the checks that I always do is basically just to ask it a very simple to the point question. In this case, what is the capital of England? The capital of England is London. It's nice and succinct in its answer. It's also response time was actually quite quick for, for this as well. Story writing. I think in some ways the koala models do better at story writing because they were actually also pre-trained on some data sets around story writing and poems and stuff like that, where I don't think this model has been uh, pre-trained with those in there. That said, though, it's still able to come up with a, a story. It understands that playing pool is, it, it, it's pool the game, not pool something that you swim in. And overall, it puts together a story that, okay, makes sense. We can look at that and, and understand it. One of the ones that I was pleased with was this as an AI, do you like The Simpsons and what do you know about Homer? So again, this is one of the ones that we've asked for a lot of the models and looked at it. And often the answer we'll get back is that it cannot have a preference because it's an AI model. This one doesn't say that. We get back, yes, I am a fan of The Simpsons. It's one of my favorite TV shows and has been around for many years. And then it goes into a whole thing about Homer and gets facts about the TV show. It's able to then work out that, summer it up, that Homer is a lovable character with plenty of flaws that make him relatable to audiences. I think the answer for this one is very good compared to some of the ones that we've seen where it basically just doesn't want to give an answer. So the other thing that I thought I'd do is take it and try it out on some of the, the flan paper examples. So... A while back when I did a, a notebook for the Flan 20 billion, we went through some of the examples in the paper. And some of those examples are really good. Here we can see we've got answer the following question by reasoning step by step. The cafeteria had 23 apples. If they used 20 for lunch and bought six more, how many apples do they have? So the answer should be nine. And this gets it very well. This is not the case with things like Wizard LM, with a lot of the other LMs, where its math is really not good and it's not able to work out these kinds of things. I'm not sure, you know, this is part of the maybe advantages that they're getting from the RLHF. Uh, I was a bit concerned that maybe this is just in the training set somewhere and that's where it picks it up. So interesting thing, worth trying a few things like this. Next one, answer the following question by yes or no, by reasoning step by step. Can you write a whole haiku in a single tweet? This is, it gets wrong, right? This one, it gives us an interesting answer and it certainly does you know, give us the reasoning, but it, it comes out with a wrong answer for this. Next one is another one from the Flan paper. Can Jeffrey Hinton have a conversation with George Washington? Give the rationale before answering. And it's no, it's not possible for Jeffrey Hinton to have a conversation with George Washington as they lived in different centuries and were born over 200 years apart. Additionally, communication between people from different time periods would require some form of time travel, which has yet to be discovered or developed. It's nice that it put in that last bit. I, anyway, that one, again, this may have been in the training set. So I asked it about Marcus Aurelius and George Washington. Again, it gave a very good coherent answer explaining that these two people lived in different times and did very good job with that, actually. So then I started to ask it a few questions about Marcus Aurelius to sort of just test it for facts. And it, it does pretty well with this. If we ask it, tell me three facts about Marcus Aurelius that most people don't know. Uh, it's able to come up with three lesser known facts in there. I, but then certain times it will just fail miserably. So in this case, we ask it, okay, who is Marcus Aurelius's son? And a here it just says that the name of his son is not known as there are no historical records indicating that. And, and that's not true at all. His uh, son went on to become emperor. 
this one fails. But then the amazing thing is if we just add to this a little bit and say, who was Marcus Aurelius's son and what was he like? Now it suddenly says, oh yes, Marcus Aurelius had a son named Commodus, correct. Who later became emperor of Rome, correct. However, Commodus is remembered for his tyrannical rule, correct. And even assassination, correct. So it has the facts in there, but at times it's, it's not very good at getting some of those out. And then when I asked it this, you know, about Commodus directly, it was able to put this together and, and give us some information about him that was accurate as well. So overall, I think Stable Vicuna is definitely a cool model. I will make a follow-up video of talking about using this as an open source model with Langchain for React reasoning. I've put together a notebook for that. So I think maybe one of the next videos will walk through and look at can this model be used for that and see the results of that. Anyway, overall, uh, it's definitely worth checking out if you have the ability to run this model. I think there are versions now already out there with four bits so that you could run this locally or you could run this with a smaller GPU. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out, having a play with and seeing for your particular use case, how good is it for you? And I think that's the key thing with all these models now is that for each person's use case, that tends to be one of these top models will be the right one for you. Uh, and we're not seeing sort of massive jumps like we were perhaps a month ago in some of these models. Anyway, as always, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments. If you like the video, please click and subscribe. Uh, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.